had been sideways for a little bit. You mentioned the changing starting lineup. What Tim Kloos did in practice, he got so frustrated with this team, he said, you know what, for the next couple of days, we're playing winners. Whoever ends up winning the scrimmage the next couple of days, that's who's going to end up starting. And lo and behold, it's really worked for Deshaun Much, who is stuck in the mud playing awful. And then the last two games as a starter, he's got for 18 and 19. He could be the X factor for Iona. With the basketball, number 23, Stevie Jordan, and he is immediately jumped by two Iona Gales, able to handle that. And now Ryder and its road Cranberry settles in for the first time. And Doug, you and I had the last matchup between these two teams, and Iona was completely flat in that ball game. They had no energy in that game. Tim Clue said, we're going to come after Ryder as much as we can early on to make sure that we've got energy to match them. Well, the hope is that they can get after the freshman point guard from Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, and try and turn Stevie Jordan over. Here goes Ricky McGill all the way to the bucket. Terrific sophomore point guard who is second in the league in assists. He's got his first two points. Gale's on the board first. And he's been the most consistent Gale all year long. Taylor is fouled by Washington, and therein lies the problem for this very talented 6'8 senior from Queens. And one of the reasons why they had been bringing him off the bench for a long stretch late in the year until he started the last couple of games to try and protect him. He said in the open he averages 33.4 points per game for every 40 minutes played. That's best in the country, just a little ahead of Marcus Keene, who leads the country in scoring from Central Michigan. And you don't have to prorate his numbers for them to be impressive. Jordan Washington in two games against Ryder this year averaged 31 points, including that career-high 38-point performance in a losing effort. Jimmy Taylor gets one for two. And into the full-court pressure come the Bronx. And the Bronx, a team that doesn't pick up in full-court pressure a whole lot. McGill. He's got five. It's 5-1 Iona. So both teams trying to extend the floor defensively to give themselves some energy. If teams are going to press you, you've got to beat them and make them pay for it. Taylor called for traveling as he planted. His sneaker slipped out underneath him, turning it back over to the Gales. Ricky McGill, sophomore from Spring Valley, New York, averaging 10 points, five assists per game, and he leads the league in steals at 1.8 per game. And as you mentioned, Rob, he has been steady as she goes, consistent, third in the league in assist to turnover. No assist on that one if it had gone. Washington misfires on his first attempt. And good deep by Lundy to stay with him and bottom. Set Casimir steals it away from Jordan. Bounce pass McGill, couldn't handle it. Jordan coming back the other way. On the run, Ryder. And Khalil Thomas is fouled. While in the shoot, uh, act of shooting. Well, Stevie Jordan, after turning it over on the play before, is aggressive. He's not worried about that turnover. Great pass ahead to be able to find Thomas. Thomas is a six foot seven inch senior from Parkway, Florida. And he earlier this week was named third team all conference, averaging 14 points, nearly nine rebounds per game. And it's been good to see him be able to have this type of year while staying healthy all season, which is something he has struggled with throughout his college career. Deshaun Much around and out. On this end of the floor, you've got to try to pound the basketball inside as much as possible to go right at Jordan Washington. It's exactly what Norval Carey just did in Washington, gave him room. That's the thing. Once he gets himself in any kind of foul trouble, he doesn't guard anybody. So you can go right at him for two reasons, to try and pick up the foul, but also because you're not going to have anybody protecting the rim defensively. E.J. Crawford. A unanimous choice for the All-Mac freshman team is announced earlier this week. He gets it back in the corner. Four on the shot clock. McGill lets fly. Good defense by Ryder. Taylor comes away with the basketball. 
Jordan, shovel pass carry. Had it knocked away from behind. Don't think he felt McGill there. Crawford able to use the window. And the freshman from Hartford makes it 7-4. to four. Taylor tries to tie it up. From Washington, letting everybody in the building know who got that rebound. I think he screamed, give me that. <laughs> but when he's aggressive like that, that's a good sign for the Gales. He hands to Deshaun Much, left it short. So a slow start to Much, who you said could easily be an X factor type of guy in this game. Lundy with a horrific shot. Yeah, he was absolutely non existent in the first round when he had just two points on one for five. He's Ryder's X Factor. Yeah. And he's a guy that when he plays well can really contribute. Casmir with a two point jumper. Nine to four. Carey given space again by Washington. This time he was a little short. The Gales love to push the basketball. They put pressure on you to get back defensively. Much continues to be aggressive, just can't buy a bucket. Taylor, good control in the lane, and he gets the roll. Now he's got such good upper body strength. He's really worked on his all-around game. He has been so much more aggressive offensively here in the month of February. Now with this starting lineup here tonight for Iona, you've got veteran guards, John Severe and Sam Cassell Jr. As Jordan's going to be called for the foul. You've got two guys, fifth-year seniors averaging over 11 points each coming off the bench. Gales with their starters up three early. knowing that you will always compete against the best while making you become the best that you can be. It's about joining a family with a storied history where athletics and academics are held to the highest of standards. It's about creating the future leaders of tomorrow, all with the focus on one goal, graduation. It's the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. Want to achieve more than you ever thought possible? At Canisius College, you can. A Canisius education is packed with extraordinary opportunities like top-level scientific research, global service experiences, and real-world connections. Want to intern at a Fortune 500 company? Want to get into the best medical and law schools? Want to be a champion for social justice? You can, here. Uh, I'm in there as Katie. I'll call you later. Or, no, I won't. I'll text you because what am I? Your dad? <laughs> Don't stay out too late. Um, yeah, just text me. Thank you. Get home safe. This must be what Antonio Brown feels like when he's dancing in the end zone. Touchdown, Antonio Brown! Huh. This must be how Lucas felt when he finally got Katie's number. Pepsi. Mac basketball is brought to you by Geico. I love New York, New York State. It's all here. It's only here. Visit iloveny.com. Life storage, it's your life. Store it with care. And UHY, the leading choice for professional tax and business consulting services. UHY, experience the next level of service. With Rob Kennedy, I'm Doug Sherman back at the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference men's quarterfinals. Iona with the early 9-6 lead, and now we see Sam Cassell Jr.'s come into the game. And, uh, Rob, he has started most of the year, and I was saying before the break, John Severe as well, the Fordham grad transfer, and uh, Cassell from UConn. They both are very productive. They've had big games, have the potential to put up big numbers. Why are they coming off the bench at such a critical part of the year? Yeah, absolutely, because as we said, they played winners a couple of days ago <laughs> in practice. And it certainly, uh, Tim Kloos is an old school guy. He was a longtime high school coach. He said, you know what? I was just frustrated with our team's effort. 
in practice a couple days prior to that, the second team was absolutely beaten up on the first team. So he said, you know what, here, it, it, it's like when you're the tennis coach, right? You say, you go play him if you win your first single. Yep. He did the same thing with his team. And he said it was crazy because in the second day of it, it got down, and the second team was down by about 16, came storming back, okay. wanted the buzzer. They're all going crazy. <laughs> he said, you know what? So the winners go the spoils. Absolutely. And so they get to start. How do you imagine the minutes will then shake down throughout the course of the game, dictated by who's playing the best? Absolutely. And what he does here is it allows him to have even more depth, bringing guys like Severe and Cassell off the bench who could score. McGill already with nine. I'll tell you, I uh, have attended multiple Iona practices again this year, and as have you, Rob. It, it, I get the sense that this is a cohesive team, a group of guys who really like each other, and that's not always the case. No, and they just don't have as many scoring options as they've had in the last couple of years. Now, with that said, they have had seven guys that have gone for 20 or more in a game during the season. The only school in the country that's got seven guys that have scored 20 or more. Second turnover on Jordan, the fourth committed by Ryder. Kevin Baggett's club down seven. Well, it seems like, as we see Ricky McGill coming at us, seems like a, a right of spring that Iona's going to be in the MAC championship game, and in order to get there, they're going to have to beat Ryder and then win again. And uh, do you see that out of this team as the number three seed that they've got that type of ability, Rob? Oh, absolutely, because they can score it on the perimeter, and if Jordan Washington scores it inside in the paint, they've got great offensive balance. Crawford fouled on the three, and so Thomas commits the cardinal sin that will allow the terrific freshman to go to the line to shoot three free throws. And as you said, lately the Gales have been in the final. Seems like every year, five out of the six years that Tim Kluse has been the head coach, they've been to the championship game. The only time they didn't get to the final, they got Nat Large bid to the NCAA tournament on the strength of their regular season championship. Yeah, the numbers for Tim Kluse during his uh, tenure as head coach at Iona have been outstanding. Three times to the NCAA tournament. Rob mentions in 2012 when they received an at-large bid, one of only two teams in MAC history dating back to 81-82 who two have done that. And there you see that uh, he's already number two on the all-time coaching list with some pretty good names right there. Jim McDermott out in front. And uh, if Coach Clues chooses to stay in New Rochelle for the next several years, he easily will be the all-time winner. He's also already up to number three all-time and wins in the MAC. Over 100 wins. Taylor Bessick off the bench blocks that Thomas shot out of bounds. Well, the one thing about the Gales, they can score with anybody. What got them the championship last year is they really started to defend late in the season. And if the Gales can guard like they have here in the first six minutes of this ball game, they certainly can make some noise up here in Albany. Yeah, Bessick, sixth in the league in block shots in relatively limited time but they're flying around out there right now. That's not the same team that you and I saw when they played Ryder a couple of weeks ago. Good thought. Thomas, though, has his pass intended for Anthony Durham, knocked out of bounds. Six on the shot clock for Ryder. And Kevin Baggett doesn't have nearly the depth to be able to utilize his bench like Iona does. He's got Keelan Washington Ives coming off the bench, a very good sophomore point guard who's in the game now. Anthony Durham as well, and Tyre Marshall coming off his career game in the first round. There's Washington Ives getting himself on the board. And he was so important the other night in the win against Manhattan because late in the ball game, Stevie Jordan got benched, and it was Keelan Washington Ives that took care of the basketball, didn't turn it over. He only had two turnovers against that relentless Manhattan pressure. He had four points, five assists, and he actually played more minutes in that game against Manhattan than did Jordan by a couple. Here is Washington Ives. They list him at 5'9", sophomore from Providence, and he's called for traveling. He's somebody who, uh, you know, we talk about Extrapolating the numbers for Jordan Washington per 40 minutes. If you take Keelan Washington Ives numbers and put them out, he's averaging better than six assists per game per 40 minutes. He really has had a very good year, and, and it gives Ryder 
a terrific one-two punch. You can have them out there together or yep. one at a time. And when Stevie Jordan was suspended for the four games, Washington Ives went off. He had two double-doubles in his four starts. Bessick throws it down. Senior from Philadelphia makes it 17 to 8. Gales. Khalil Thomas. Thomas gets back his own miss, but didn't feel the presence of Ricky McGill, who stole it away. Missed opportunity. Severe back to McGill. He's had the hot hand, and that continues. He by himself is outscoring Ryder 12 to 8. Timeout on the floor here at the Times Union Center. Taylor Bessick coming off the bench tonight for the Gales. And the starting point guard, Ricky McGill, bringing it. Iona by a dozen. Kevin, in the early going, you guys haven't had the same intensity that Iona's had. Probably one of the reasons why you just took that time out, I guess. Yeah, and they're running around pressing us a little more than what they did the last time. So we just need to adjust to a couple of things and settle down. We wanted to establish going into paint. I got guys, my big shooting jump shots, not what we wanted to get done early on. And they've been able to find a couple of threes in transition. How do you clean that up? By just yelling at them. We got to be more aggressive, Rob, getting after them. All right, go yell at them. Thank you. Iona has been bringing it to Ryder early here in Albany. Let's get the thoughts of Bronx head coach Kevin Baggett. Kevin, in the early going, you guys haven't had the same intensity that Iona's had. Probably one of the reasons why you just took that time out, I guess. Yeah, and they're running around pressing us a little more than what they did the last time. So we just need to adjust to a couple of things and settle down. We wanted to establish going into paint. I got guys, my big shooting jump shots, not what we wanted to get done early on. And they've been able to find a couple of threes in transition. How do you clean that up? By just yelling at them. we got to be more aggressive, Rob. I'm getting after them. All right, go yell at them. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no need to yell at Ricky McGill, the uh, sophomore point guard for Iona, by himself outscoring the opposition. He's got a dozen, and we're not even eight minutes in. Well, he started the game by being aggressive. That was the first basket of the game. Turned the corner, got to the rim. But he's also found a couple of open looks from beyond the three-point line. As you said, he's been aggressive. He's gotten six shots already. I love the intensity, the way that the Gales have been flying around on the court here. Good sign for Tim Clouse's team. And, you know, Ryder survived its first-round game against Manhattan despite turning the ball over 17 times. And Wild. Just Turned it over there, except for the fact the officials missed the travel on Washington Eye. Well, Ryder already has seven turnovers and counting, three of them on Jordan, who turned it over seven times in the game against Manhattan. So again, that's a consideration as Iona continues to get after him. Taylor claims he was hit on the wrist, no call. And most of those turnovers against Manhattan were in the second half. Somebody better go guard Ricky McGill from beyond the three. McGill coming in, not one of the better three-point shooters for this Iona team, who has plenty of them. Well, his career high came back in January in this building against Siena when he scored 22. He's already got 15 here tonight. Second straight air ball by Ryder. The wheels are coming off here, Rob. And again, what did Kevin Baggett say when I talked to him just then? Settle down and get the basketball inside. So what do they do? They run around crazy and take guarded deep shots. 
That's why coaching is not the easiest profession. No. Much severe. There goes McGill again. Wow, look at Bessick just go over top of everybody. Well, he's a head taller than anybody Ryder has on the floor, but that doesn't account for the fact that he went after that ball harder than anybody else. Bessick just goes over top of everybody. And I'm not quite sure where the foul was on Washington Ives there, unless they called loitering. <laughs> there goes McGill. Again, like you said, somebody should start defending him. He has now missed his last two. Jordan over Bessick. Third straight rider shot that hasn't hit the rim. And that's not the way you're going to make up a 15-point deficit. Sevier commits his first, and Carey will go to the line. Well, Jordan's so quick with the basketball, goes by everybody. Great defense right there. No foul because he's straight up as Bessick again challenges his shot. Well, 13 days ago when these two teams played at Iona, Ryder shot 60%, routed the Gales 103-85, and that marks Stevie Jordan's return to the starting lineup, coming off suspension and then having come off the bench. And that seemed to be the magic elixir to get this Ryder offense going. Final three games of the regular season, averaging nearly triple digits. They put 69 on the board in the first round game. But my goodness, we are seeing a completely different team so far tonight. And a completely different Iona defense. Tim Kluse's team is being aggressive. They've extended the floor. The full court pressure has bothered Ryder. And then back in the half court, the zone has been really active, getting out on guys. They have bothered Ryder. Ryder has not been able to settle down and try and execute the game plan of pounding the basketball inside. Jordan Washington back in for Bessick. And, you know, it seems like we talk about all the numbers and the wins in the NCAA tournaments and MAC championships for Tim Kluse, but in my recollection during his now seven years as head coach, his teams more often than not are here and ready to play. You know, they don't come out and lay an egg, and, and you see this intensity that they brought and whether the tactic of having winners to determine who was starting, whether that's what got them going or helped to set the tone. They just seem to be ready to go, and, and tournament time, like you said, they rarely lay an egg. And they also have multiple guys that can lead a team in scoring all the time. So if you take one guy away, they've always got second and third options to step up. Jordan, a little floater along the baseline. Gill feeds the post for Washington. Lundy pulls it out, and here comes Jordan again. Drop pass Washington Ives. Carey, double team, has to dribble out. Lundy, open look for three. Wow, that one barely nicked the eye. And again, this is a guy that could score the basketball, scored well over 2,000 points in high school. Got nearly 1,000 points here at Ryder. He just cannot find the mark here now. I mean, he has missed wildly on both his jump shots. Right, both of his three-point shots have hit the backboard yeah. first. Hard to figure. We said the three-point line was a big story in both of the games when these deep teams met. And Iona won that ball game. They shot it great from deep. And they got blown out. They couldn't make a basket from beyond the three-point line. Carey commits the eighth turnover for Ryder. Crawford, Cassell, Severe, Washington, and Kasmer out there for Iona. Gales looking for their 20th win of the year, and that will make it seven years in a row for Tim Cruz with 20 or more. Kasmer blocked by Jordan. And Iona will keep possession with 15 to shoot. It's so good to see Sed Kazmir out there and able to get back up after going down hard with what he has dealt with over the last year and a half. Undergoing three surgeries. Cassell was fouled. And they still hope Sed Kazmir next year, when his body fully gets back to normal, is able to get 
more similar to what we saw two years ago when he was the rookie of the year in this league. Yeah, he's had a couple of games where he looked like the old said Casimir against Canisius. He had 27, 27 against Maris. That Canisius game, he was 7 of 9 from beyond the three-point line. But uh, as you said, those three surgeries, it, you know, hip surgery is a lot different than a lot of other surgeries. Hard to come back from, and he's certainly not 100% yet. And he did miss a game earlier this year, the uh, game at Ryder he had to sit out. As Sam Cassell Jr. makes the first free throw. Casimir is a uh, redshirt sophomore from Stamford, Connecticut. Averaging six and a half points per game after two years ago, averaging nearly 15 per game. Well, he's such a great shooter, and that stroke is still there. He's still shooting it at 92% from beyond the three-point line. He's still shooting it uh, from the foul line, excuse me, still shooting it well from beyond the three. But his quickness, which is what set everything up as a freshman to get those open looks from three, that's not back to the level it was before the injury. Yeah, two torn labrums and a sports hernia. averaging nearly 16 per game. Closed out the regular season on a tear, averaging 25 a night for their last six games. Ryder able to get to the rim, but unable to finish was Norville Carey. And they've got to be able to finish some of those so that you can slow Iona down as well. You score the basketball, it's a little bit easier to get back in transition D. Carey pokes it away. Jordan, one on two. Strong finish. Let's see if that can get them going. They've got to get some stops. And then they've got to figure out, when they do get into the half court, how to be a little bit more patient against the zone. And they go Washington. Boy, Iona is following the script to a T. And they look good. They do. First two points for the senior from Jamaica, Queens. Good ball reversal, and look how quick Washington is. He was already drop-stepping on the catch, and that's what put Carey in a position where he had nothing to do but pick up the foul. Washington fourth in the league in scoring, fifth in rebounds, unanimous first-team All-Mac. And what's interesting, the seventh consecutive year under Tim Kloos that he's had at least one guy on the first team. During that stretch, I believe the only big is Mike Glover. The other guys have been their fabulous guards. And uh, David Lowry, though, too. That's true. I think of David yeah. Moore as a well, uh, face-up, but you're right. But he could play out on the perimeter as well as post it up inside. No doubt. No doubt. But this is what happens to Jordan Washington. Picked up a double foul there, and then uh, Kevin Baggett, not happy with the call, picked up the tee. Kevin was well out onto the floor regardless of what he was saying or doing. And it almost makes you think that uh, he doesn't mind getting that technical right there. You said he was going to yell at his team, or he told you he was going to yell at his team. Hasn't worked yet, so now he's yeah. yelling at the refs trying to get something going. Well, so far his team hasn't shown much no. fight, so every once in a while you've got to show your team that you've got some fight. Personal foul was on Tyre Marshall, 16 foul. Casmer makes the two technical free throws. Yeah, I think actually it was a double foul on both Washington and, and Marshall. Marshall. So really, if you're Kevin Baggett, that works out well for you because that gets Marshall his, or excuse me, gets. Washington, his second foul, which will probably get him to the bench for a while. But like I said, I, I think he was trying to show his team, like, hey, let's let's start battling. Got to show a little toughness here, a little grit. Well, he was getting after Rob Riley, one of the officials. Now he's in the ear of Kevin Ferguson over on that side. Ball loose. And the foul goes against Ryder. Tell you what, I think that should have been an over and back because I think it went off of an Iona player's foot before it got into the backcourt. That did not work out well for the Ryder Bronx. 
Nothing much is working out for the Ryder Bronx. Down 19 here in the first half. So, Mr. Harris, we have your fingerprints on the safe, a photo of you opening the safe, a post using the hashtag just robbed the safe. So, what are we supposed to think? Switching to Geico could save you a bunch of money on car insurance. Excellent point. Case dismissed. Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. There's one state that has more ski mountains to choose from than any other in the country. And that's not the only thing you can only find in New York State. You can find it all, only in New York. New York, it's all here. It's only here. Plan your winter getaway at iloveny.com. NCAA March Madness heads back to Buffalo in just a matter of days, March 16th and 18th. And you can be there by going to NCAA.com slash MBB tickets to pick up your tickets and also learn about hospitality options. That's the NCAA tournament in Buffalo, March 16th and 18th. Pep band for the Iona College Gales here to our left along the baseline. Jordan Washington on the bench. He is emotive, and I'm not sure exactly what to uh, read from that facial expression, but he does have two personal fouls and may be out for a little bit here. Said Kazmir at the line. Gets the front end of the one and one. And Jordan. Uh, He's as emotional and outwardly emotional as any player in the league. He watches Kazmir with a couple of free throws, 32-11. Lundy over Bessick. Marshall got a hand on it. There's Thomas and the senior Floridian with good effort on the glass. But at some point in time, if you're Ryder, you got to make a shot. They're now four of 18 from the floor. 22% from the floor is not going to get it done. Last time against these Gales, Kevin Baggett's team shot it at 60%, yeah. 66% in the second half. I mean, Lundy had a good post up, but as soon as he turned, he's worried about Bessick there. Once again, he barely. Nick the iron. That's one thing to, to, to do it from beyond the three point line, but a post up from four feet, you got to be able to convert. We've talked about it. Lundy is capable of putting a lot of points on the board. The average is 10 per game. But he certainly does seem to either have an on switch or an off switch. And that's the hardest thing as a coach to coach a guy that doesn't have the on switch on all the time. You know, inconsistent players are the hardest guys to be able to coach. A guy averages 12 points per game, you're fine. Yeah. A guy gets 24 and then zero. Boy, that is hard to be able to game plan for and hard to coach. Severe called for the charge. That's his second foul. Tyrell Williams, a 6'9 sophomore from Miami, has come into the game for Iona. Marshall, offensive foul. Number two on the freshman from Philly. Well, he puts that shoulder down, and that is just great defense to move your feet, get over there, get established. 
Plenty of time right there by Williams to give up his body. seven-minute mark. Deshaun Much back in for the Gales. His pass bounces off of Thomas. Iona has eight seconds on the clock. Tyre Marshall out, and there's Norville Carey returning, the uh, graduate transfer from the University of Southern Mississippi. McGill, he has gone cold after a torrid start. He's got 15 points to lead all scores, 32-12 Iona. Crawford blocked the shot by Taylor. Kazmir off the bounce. Pretty looking stroke. And they can convert transition back. You come up with a block shot or a miss shot. They leak out and get it up in transition with early offense with the best of them. That's nine for Kazmir. Taylor. He's got six, 35 to 16. Taylor's the guy in terms of shooting the basketball for Ryder. You know, he had the game-winning three-point shot in their first round win over Manhattan. And throughout his entire four-year college career, he has been that guy willing to take that shot. Stevie Jordan with the degree of difficulty able to finish. Well, that was a tough one, and I'm not quite sure why Lundy got involved with it. He ended up grabbing the rim there. Could, it end, could have ended up being an offensive interference call. Much. Williams, no call, and then the whistle blows. It's an offensive foul against the Wyoming transfer. Oh, we saw the exact same play down here, even though it's a late call. You got to be consistent with it. And Carey was outside the arc. I think that's a good call as well. Better late than never. Yep. Former teammate of Larry Nance Jr. with the Wyoming Cowboys. Now of the, is he still with the Lakers, Larry Nance Jr.? You know what? No, he got traded, didn't he? I, I think so. He can dunk like his father. <laughs> and that's saying something. Yeah. First foul on Kazmir. And since it's the 10th, for Iona, we've got two free throws upcoming for Norville Carey. He played very, very well in the first round win. 12 points, eight rebounds against Manhattan. He's got his sociology degree in his hip pocket, working as a grad student now at Ryder University. We've talked a lot about how Jimmy Taylor played so well coming down the stretch. The same can be said for Carey, who in the last eight, eight games been averaging over 15 points and seven and a half rebounds per game. Bronx have had a little bit more life on the defense then lately. Crawford, nice job to contest by Thomas. Yeah, that's a good defensive possession. Taylor, double team. Thomas for three. It's good. Well, even though you don't necessarily want your big stepping out and taking that shot. Good recognition by Jimmy Taylor to get through the trap and find Thomas. Just the sixth made three on the season for Thomas in just 20 attempts. Taylor tried to dribble his way out of the trap. Then all of a sudden when he picked it up, good job to find the lane to get around the defense. Find Thomas wide open. Yeah, no uh, panic there when he was double teamed. And that's senior to senior, hoping to extend their college careers at least to the MAC semifinals. The winner of this game will take on St. Peter's in the 7 o'clock semi. Tomorrow night, a game you can see right here on ESPN3. And there you see the Bronx trying to get back in it with an 11 to 3 run. Not a coincidence that uh, this run was started when Jordan Washington picked up that second foul on the double foul with him on the bench. Iona doesn't have the same scoring balance of inside out. Kazmir, second mid-range pull-up we've seen him hit. A 
11 points for Kasner, 37-22. Taylor now, the lone freshman out there for Ryder. Jordan with a big offensive rebound, and he finds Carey for two more. That's a great individual effort by Stevie Jordan. Ryder has four seniors or grad students out there and one freshman. Trying to chip away before we get to halftime. Cassell tied up. Jordan's got it. Stevie Jordan missed the layup. Thomas, good hustle, and he'll go to the line. Great effort by Thomas to make the run and make sure that you're there to clean things up on the miss by Jordan. But there's the effort by Jordan. Always looking for a teammate. Back within 13 of the Ryder Bronx. We see the world differently. Where some see challenge, we see opportunity. We use the lessons of the past to drive our vision of the future. We are a global gateway, a classroom and laboratory, retreat and home. We stand up, step forward, and fight the good fight to prepare tomorrow's leaders and visionaries. We are a gale force that breaks down barriers to move the world. There you go, a little triple drive. Feel the intensity of NCAA March Madness. That's a three. Ooh. You've got to see it to believe it. The 2017 NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship first and second rounds. March 16th and 18th at the Key Bank Center in Buffalo. Visit NCAA.com slash MBB tickets for your seats today. Fulfill your educational goals on a 22-acre private residential campus just minutes away from the world's economic, cultural, communications, and entertainment center, New York City. For more than 160 years, Manhattan College has promised a LaSallean Catholic education featuring five schools of study that challenge students to excel academically while providing career opportunities second to none. Find out what Manhattan College can promise your future. Here's a look at this year's All-Mac first team as announced earlier this week. Tyler Nelson, Fairfield, Jordan Washington, who we're watching tonight with Iona. A pair of Monmouth Hawks, Justin Robinson and Micah Seaborn, and then Quadier Welton for St. Peter's. And coming up at halftime, we'll show you more on that group. And, uh, of course, Justin Robinson for the second straight year wins Mac Player of the Year. We still don't have word on Micah Seaborn's availability for Monmouth's semifinal game. Uh, Appeared to re-injure that knee last night. Didn't come back into the game and was on crutches. What more might you know at this point, Rob? I still think it's going to be day to day. But the one thing that they do have is the benefit of the extra day off. Sure. With the new format to the MAC tournament now in its second year, where the first and second seeds get that day off in between the quarterfinals and semifinals. At least there's a much better shot that they may be able to have Seaborn. At the free throw line, Khalil Thomas, third in the league in rebounds. He's actually moved into the top ten all-time in rider history in that category here tonight. It's one out of two from the foul line. Iona has led by as many as 22. It's back down to 12. And the Bronx get the basketball back. Every once in a while, people say, so why does the coach get a technical? That doesn't seem to make any sense. Well, since Kevin Baggett got that technical and as well get the benefit of Jordan Washington picking up his second foul, the game has changed. This team has come out with a little bit more fight. They've been much tougher on the defensive end, have more energy, and that's allowed them to get back in the ball game. That's now a 14-2 run as Thomas banks it in. And one of the guys who's had that energy has been Thomas. We've seen him out guarding guys on the perimeter, down in his stance, and demanding the basketball in the post, especially without Washington in there. Much for three. It's good. 
That's just good ball movement. You get a guy diving down the lane off a pick and roll, and what it does is it sucks the defense in, and then you replace right up to the three-point line with Mutt. And the biggest cheerleader on the Iona bench continues to be Jordan Washington. He was the one guy who got up and was applauding his teammates. Sitting with two fouls. Washington has only two points so far tonight. That's foul number three on Taylor Bessick. So Tyrell Williams, who's got an extended playing time because of foul trouble, has two fouls. Washington has two and Bessick has three, so the Gales are going to run out of available bigs quickly at this rate. Now Williams returns. And more important to protect Bessick than Williams. Durham, junior guard from Philly back into the game. Xavier Lundy goes out. Lawrenceville, New Jersey is not far from Philadelphia, so uh, it's always been fertile recruiting ground for Ryder University to get student athletes out of Philly. And it's always been the case in the uh, two decades they have spent competing in the match. McGill, very aggressive. Great job leaning in. Oh, and right from the start of the ball game, first time he touched it. You could see he was going to be aggressive. He was going to probe, put the ball to the floor, and go attack. That's what he does right here. Once again, turn in the corner, and as you said, the lean in with the shoulder to create the contact. And when you do that, it allows you to then bounce off and finish. And it's also enabled him to get Stevie Jordan his second foul. And here's McGill out of Rockland County, New York, Old Spring Valley home. And he has 18 points. Another double running it. Handled nicely by Jordan on the spin away, and then the reach in foul given by Severe. They almost caught Stevie Jordan off guard, but you're right, he got rid of the basketball and got it to the right guy's hands. Third foul on Severe. Doug, throughout the year, Ryder's not been a very good foul shooting team. Last in the MAC at 67%, but free throw shooting bailed them out against Manhattan. 24 for 30 from the line. That 80%, one of the reasons they were able to survive by one. Not only survived on the court, but had to survive two reviews after yeah. the game was over. Yeah. One to see whether or not Xavier Turner shot at the buzzer. It was good, it was not, and then they had to survive the review as to whether or not Stevie Jordan's shot was a three or a two, and there was inconclusive evidence on that, so it stayed the three as it was called on the floor. Williams, around and out. And the unlikeliest of Ryder Bronx to make free throws in the game against Manhattan did just that. Williams the block shot, but Tyre Marshall came in at 33% in that game, hit three out of four. Jordan, nothing but net. Yeah, good ball movement, much crisper here in the last five, six minutes for the Bronx. And if they could get this lead down to single digits, Doug, heading into the locker room, you gotta feel good about it. Kazmir off the screen from McGill for three. But that's what Iona does, just when you think, all right, we're getting back the three-point shot, such a big part of what they do. Top 20 in the country again this year at 9.8 made threes per game. This after being in the top 10 each of the last three years. Good job by Williams to stand his ground. McGill, man possessed out there. Out of bounds, back to Ryder. So with under a minute to go, Ryder continues to hang around. Durham, not a good shot. 
Good rebound by Carey, but a bad pass trying to find Thomas. Here's Kazmir. Got it knocked away. Saved by Crawford. Iona has it. Much for three. It's good. What a sequence. It was down to 10, and now it's back up to 16. Because a back-to-back -back threes, both of them on dribble penetration first, and the second one on a broken play. Here comes the double. Three seconds left. Jordan hits. Well, that is a big three. A chance now for Ryder to further catch its breath. Check it two was the original call on the floor too, Rob. Yep, and the officials will check that as they head into the locker room. The uh, formula, we've seen it from Ricky McGill and his teammates. They've got the ball first to begin the second half, and can they sustain it, or can Ryder make another push and make things interesting? Well, the starting unit for Iona, much Casimir. Crawford, McGill with it now, and Washington back in there. He missed most of that first half with the two fouls. Kazmir can't find the range. Ryder's got Jordan with the basketball out there with Thomas, Lundy. This is Carey with a quick spin. Left it on the rim, though. Good aggression. That's Lundy with the bucket. But that's what they've got to do. That was their game plan coming in to pound the basketball inside because they got down by so much, they got away from that game plan. Much driving dish. Nice. Washington, easy too. And remember, Washington's got fresh legs because he was sitting for a long stretch of that first half. Great drive and dish, though, by Much. Yeah, he sat 12 of the 20 first half minutes. And that's, Thomas. That's why you pound it inside, just force feed it in there and try and go at Jordan Washington as long as you possibly can. McGill with eight on the shot clock. Washington sets the screen, now gets the pass. Wow, tough finish. Now he's a guy that can fight through contact. He's big and strong enough, but he's agile and quick in the post too, Doug. Two-time Mac Player of the Week. This season, December 12th, January 2nd. Unanimous first-team all-conference. Kickball by Crawford. And so the shot clock will stay at 20. See, he's quick, he can handle the basketball, gets bumped, he's off balance, doesn't matter. How important is it, and we've seen it from him multiple times here tonight, to beat the defender when you get the ball in the post? Lundy for three, how big is that? Oh, quick first step. That first step is so important because now you've got the defender on your back and you can dictate where you're going. Good to see Lundy be able to knock down the shot. He's got five points early here in the second half after really struggling in the first. Washington, wow. Carey recovered beautifully, five to shoot, and it's Ryder who comes up with a loose ball. Taylor, three on one. Missed the layup, but there's Thomas. But good effort from the bigs of Ryder. That's the third time that they've cleaned up a miss right at the rim. Much to McGill. One and done for Iona. Jordan, again, attacking the bucket. Timeout, Iona. Well, in the first half, it was the Gales that came out and jumped Ryder. Here in the second half, complete reversal. Ryder's had the energy. Now they're able to score the basketball in transition, get themselves back into the ball game, forcing Iona to take the timeout, leads down to seven. So, Mr. Harris, we have your fingerprints on the safe, a photo of you opening the safe, a post using the hashtag, just robbed the safe, so, what are we supposed to think? Switching to GEICO could save you a bunch of money on car insurance. Excellent point. Case dismissed.
Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Oh, yes, there you go. A little dribble drive. Feel the intensity of NCAA March Madness. That's a three. You've got to see it to believe it. The 2017 NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship first and second rounds. March 16th and 18th at the Key Bank Center in Buffalo. Visit NCAA.com slash MBB tickets for your seats today. Uh, I'm in there as Katie. I'll call you later. Or, no, I won't. I'll text you because what am I, your dad? <laughs> Don't stay out too late. Um, yeah, just text me. Thank you. Get home safe. This must be what Antonio Brown feels like when he's dancing in the end zone. Touchdown, Antonio Brown! Huh. This must be how Lucas felt when he finally got Katie's number. Pepsi. Well, Rob, I guess we shouldn't be surprised after having the two disparate results in the regular season matchups between Ryder and Iona that we have disparate halves at least so far in this ball game. Yeah, but it started with the energy much like it was in the regular season, right? The first meeting, Iona was the aggressor. First game without Stevie Jordan, and Ryder looked lost. Kevin Baggett's team did not play well at home, and then on the road, they played great. Iona didn't have energy. First half, Iona came out flying all over the floor. We haven't seen that same energy from Tim Kluse's team here to start the second. Well, Ryder closed out the regular season better than Iona did. They have won three in a row, including a first-round victory over Manhattan, said Kazmir. Terrific set coming out of the break to find him wide open in the corner. And that's what they do. They execute. 17 for Kazmir. Lundy no. And the fight for the basketball goes to Much. And we've got a held ball. And the possession arrow will stay down here. Sam Cassell Jr. has come into the game. A three-guard look and a really a four-guard look now for Iona, including Deshaun Much. Bessick the only big in there. And they got Washington out of the game because he wasn't guarding anybody inside. McGill with the block shot. Casimir flares to the corner. Left side works just like the right side. And they do that as well as any team in the country. Rush the ball up the floor and then fan guys out to the three-point line. But what they have out at the three-point line are guys that can make three. Oh, yeah. Casimir 42% on the year after a really cold start to the year. After the first half dozen games or so, Casimir really is shooting about 50-50 out there. Yeah, he started the year 2 of 15, and as you said, he's gotten that number up to over 42%. Top 10 in the league because he can really stroke it. Like I said, when he gets space, He's just about automatic. Yeah. Makes all of his foul shots and makes open threes. He's automatic tonight, four for four. And a game-high 20 points now for Seth Kazmir. Foul on the entry pass actually is a break for Iona because Khalil Thomas had a terrific seal and would have had an easy dunk. Lundy spotting up. Boy, he looks much more comfortable here in the second half. Yeah, maybe he did go to back to the locker room. Maybe he was uh, working on his J during that halftime because that's not the same stroke we saw no. in the first half. I mean, he didn't just miss threes. I mean, he was absolutely bricking them. Ricky McGill smoothed the bucket now with 20. And the good recognition to see that he had a mismatch. That's not what you need there if you're Stevie Jordan. Got to settle down, you're not going to get them all at once. Kevin Baggett's Ryder Bronx down a dozen early second half. If you want to celebrate winter in a palace of ice, there's only one place to go. 
And that's not the only thing you can only find in New York State. You can find it all, only in New York. New York, it's all here, it's only here. Plan your winter getaway at iloveny.com. We are St. Peter's University, a place where students who are eager to learn are taught by people who care, on a campus designed for both to thrive. We're proud to offer incredible learning opportunities and life-changing experiences. And that means our students are prepared to succeed in their fields, in their communities, and all over the world. Get to know St. Peter's University, the Jesuit University of New Jersey. There's a look at the remaining MAC championship schedule on the ESPN networks and our second quarterfinal of tonight will be also aired on ESPNU. Of course, you can watch it here on ESPN3 as well. But uh, if you want to watch it on your uh, big screen and make it easy, 9.30 on ESPNU. And then we've got the uh, women's and men's semifinals tomorrow all on ESPN3 and then back on the linear networks for Monday, 5 o'clock, the women's title game on ESPNU and then the men's championship, 9 o'clock on ESPN2. And Monmouth did nothing to dissuade the notion that it is the team to beat by cruising through its quarterfinal game, Rob. Yeah, they were struggling about the first 10 minutes, and then all of a sudden, in a blink of an eye, it went from a tie ball game to a 20-point lead. Only thing that's concerning for Monmouth is the injury to Micah Seaborn, first team all-league selection earlier this week. He went down in that ball game. As you said, Doug, he was on crutches, and we don't know whether or not we will see him again up here in Albany. Iona with the basketball. Deshaun much off the mark. Jordan pushing the pace. Hangs in the air. Boy, he has liked to leave his feet and go to his left side. Not necessarily try to finish with his left hand, but he's more often not, than not been effective. A good body control, and as you said, he finished that one with his right hand coming across his body. But he's been aggressive when he's been able to get out in transition off those long rebounds. Bessick, a little different with Bessick posting up than Jordan Washington. Not quite the same scoring effect. has done a real nice job defensively, especially on Jimmy Taylor tonight. Anytime he's able to get the ball, it seems like he's got somebody in white right there with him. Thomas went down. Lundy flashes, takes the pass, misses the turnaround. Casimir. Well short that time. Bessick saves, but Thomas cuts off the pass, and here comes Ryder. Much makes sure the shot doesn't get up. And number 15 in white picks up the foul. Khalil Thomas showing you his athleticism. He can move with the basketball. Came up with it, and then he's got the ability to go coast to coast and have to find the guard. He's able to take it himself. He thought he got fouled on the shot attempt, but instead the call was on the floor. Bessick out. Jordan Washington returns. Lob inside, taken away by Washington. Yeah, bad decision. Corner three, McGill. Boy, that has been quite a combination. Casimir to McGill. And it starts with the dribble penetration. You get into a gap, you kick it, you make the extra pass. And it works so effectively when you can put three, four guys out on the perimeter that can make three. Tough foul on Thomas. Second foul on Thomas. And just the first here in the second half against Ryder. And Iona's had all this success under Tim Kluse over the last seven years. And you think of their style of play, Doug, right? I mean, they get up and down the floor. They score the basketball because they share it. They're always in the top 
of the league and top nationally in assists per game. Also at the top nationally and made three-point field goals per game. Nice move inside by Washington. And because they share the basketball, push the pace, make threes, oh, guess what? They're one of the leading teams as far as scoring the basketball in the country year in and year out. Yep, this year they lead the MAC at 40% on three-point shots. They're second in the league behind only Monmouth at over 80 points per game. And in the seven years that Tim Kloos has been here, only the BYU Cougars have scored it at a greater clip in that seven-year stretch than have the Iona Gale. And a lot of the uh, principles Tim Kloos has employed at Iona, he learned back uh, at St. Agnes High School on Long Island for Frank Morris, his beloved head coach. Jordan Washington makes it 68-51, timeout rider. And just when you think you got yourself back into the ball game, it was a 10-point game. Sloppy pass and a bad decision by Xavier Lundy starts this run. But at the back end, they complete it by sharing the basketball. Nice, quick spin move to get to the other side of the floor. And then how are you going to guard that? Step back with his size, great shooting touch. Just when you think you've got to worry about everybody out on the perimeter. Oh, here comes George Washington. Getting stuff done in the paint. Eight of his ten points, Rob, have come here in the second half. And the lead, just like that, is back to 17. It had been trimmed to seven in the first couple of minutes of this second half. Yeah, the two teams in this league that can spurt like that are these Gales and the Mammoth Hawks. You can have them bottled up for a second, and if you lose focus or if you lose pace, Right, these are two teams that I don't think you want to go up and down the floor with all the time. you got to be able to make them defend on this end. They'll be a little bit more patient offensively because if you don't, they can score them in bunches. Norval Carey misses, and it goes to Iona. Well, Rob, who would you say are the most dangerous teams in the league to take down Monmouth? If not the Hawks, who do you think might be left standing? Well, on the other side of the bracket, I think St. Peter's is a team that is built to give Monmouth problems. They're, they're going to make sure that that game does not get up and down. And obviously, Peacock's had two good meetings with Monmouth, split the regular season. So you would think just by style that the Peacocks would be the team. But I'm telling you, if Iona gets going offensively, they can match the firepower that the Hawks have. Off the much miss. Jordan back to Washington Ives, who's come back into the ball game. Ball bounces to Much. Bounce it off to Washington after a mishandle. He missed the reverse. Five on four for Ryder. But another turnover. McGill to Washington. Oh, little Euro step. That's the way. It, right there he goes over the 1,000 point mark with that basket and transition. There it is, 1,001 and counting. Reach in foul against Much, who immediately looks over to the bench and says to his coach, Tim Kloos, it was me and you can take me out. I'm ready for a blow. Jordan Washington showing the full repertoire. Ten points here in the second half as the lead is ballooned back to 19. Tim, you guys were flat a little bit to start the second half, but you had real good energy as of late. What was the difference? I just think we picked up our defensive intensity, and if we do that and we, and we run and share the ball, we have a good chance of winning. And right now we're playing with good energy. We have to keep it up for the last 11 minutes. And offensively, you have been pushing the pace, getting out in transition, finding open guys. Obviously, that's always the key for you. It is, and we have to share the ball. When we got stagnant late in that first half, we got stagnant and started forcing drives ourselves and not looking to pass, and it hurt us. And early to start the second half, we did the same thing. And they're not going away. They're going to keep coming after us. We have to be ready for every run. Thanks, Tim. Thank you.
Iona 70, Ryder 51. Let's hear now from Gales head coach Tim Kloos. Tim, you guys were flat a little bit to start the second half, but you had real good energy as of late. What was the difference? I just think we picked up our defensive intensity, and if we do that and we, and we run and share the ball, we have a good chance of winning. And right now we're playing with good energy. We have to keep it up for the last 11 minutes. And offensively, you have been pushing the pace, getting out in transition, finding open guys. Obviously, that's always the key for you. It is, and we have to share the ball. When we get stagnant late in that first half, we got stagnant and started forcing drives ourselves and not looking to pass, and it hurt us. And early to start the second half, we did the same thing. And they're not going away. They're going to keep coming after us. We have to be ready for every run. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. And there's a look at the MAC tournament champions over the last seven years. And uh, you see a trend there. The last number one seed to come into this event and wind up cutting down the nets was seven years ago when Siena finished off its three-peat. And you have to go all the way back to 2004, the last time that the number one seed didn't win the tournament on their home floor which obviously Mama's not going to be on their home floor this weekend. There's Tim Kloos, one of the most successful high school coaches in the history of New York State. He won four state titles during a 14-year tenure at St. Mary's in Manhasset on Long Island, a star player during that run. Danny Green now in the NBA, former North Carolina Tar Heel. But uh, Tim Kloos has won at every level. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to coach him up, knows how to coach offense, and we're seeing he also knows how to coach some defense tonight, too. Absolutely, and fun to play that style, right? And so he's won at the high school, junior college, Division II level, and here at Iona. Near steal. No change of possession, though, so the shot clock is down to 10. Taylor goes around Kazmir, pull up from 15, halfway down, and it came out. And they need him to get going on the offensive end. Just two of 10 from the floor. And he's had a couple just like that, Doug. Jimmy Taylor's rattled a couple in, but out. Nice hustle by Stevie Jordan to save that basketball for the Bronx. Thomas flashes down the lane. And his pass intended for Jordan goes out of bounds untouched. You see the frustration there on Kevin Baggett's face. Remember he showed the graphic early on. They've been to the quarterfinals each of the five years that uh, Kevin Baggett's been the head coach, but uh, they've yet to get over that hump and get to that next round in the semifinals. Air ball McGill, about the only thing that hasn't gone right for him. And as soon as the ball left his hand, he turned right to Tim Clues and said, my bad. I won't, don't worry, I won't, I won't take that shot again. I like that one. He was right in front of Tim Clues, turned right to him and said, whoops, I got a little carried away there, Coach. And I Co did have 18 in the first half. Right, so. he's got 23 now to go along with five assists and four steals. So Coach Clues is going to let him play through that one. But I love, though, as soon as it was out of his hand, he turned around and said, oops, my bad. Marvel Carey dribbles up himself. Here's Taylor with it. Jordan steps into a three. There's Carey again. The offensive glass, one of the few places that uh, Ryder has dominated. Iona, 14th offensive rebound right there, and they've been able to convert those into 20-second chance points. If not for that, boy, they'd be in a heap of trouble. McGill, Bessick, foul. And that is basically a microcosm of why they're so hard to guard. You spread those guys out at the three-point line, so you throw the ball to McGill. You've got to rush out, close out hard because they make threes. Dribble drive, you force the defense to step up. They just execute on the offensive end and play with simple offensive principles that all revolve around being able to dribble, pass, and shoot. And that is refreshing. It is. It seems so simple. Simple. And you'd think that's what everybody would have, but clearly that's not the case and not the way college basketball is played across the board anymore. No, and you, got, you and I have talked about it many times about these Iona Gales. And they've had different players throughout Tim Kloos' seven seasons, but those principles of being able to shoot the basketball, get into gaps, be unselfish, share the basketball, that's why they scored so well. How much is that of uh, Tim Kloos and his staff recruiting to that, and how much of that is player development? 
both. But it does start when they go out and recruit guys, they make sure that guys can shoot the basketball. Great example is said Casimir. A lot of guys passed on Casimir. He was a late signing. They were worried about his size. And one of the things that Jared Grasso, the associate head coach, who does a lot of the recruiting for the Gales, he focused in on. He said, you know, I kept going and making sure. He said every game I went to, he made every single foul shot. Yeah. The guy can really stroke the basketball. And because he was small, he had great range, though, so it was hard to close out on him. And he's been able to do the same things that he did in high school at the college level because of that great shooting ability. Severe no. And a foul on the rebound. Over the years, I've had multiple conversations with both Jared Grosso and Tim Clues about that very thing, Rob, where shooting is at such a premium they put such an emphasis on it when they go out and recruit and they want to hear about anybody you might know about who can knock down shots and that's what they go they watch warm-ups they watch how you get your shot up if you can't make a big enough percentage when you're just out there by yourself they're not as interested because they want to make sure you can shoot the basketball and you know shooting makes up for just about anything yeah when you can put the ball in the hole Guess what? We're going to find a way to get you on the floor. And they put him in great positions to be able to do right there. Much can shoot the basketball. Yeah. All nine of his points, Rob, have come from distance. He went for 30 at Canisius last year, just one of their many big weapons. Corville's uh, Norville Carey, rather, is fouled by Washington. Hand over mouth, he heads back to the bench. We'll be back. We are MACSAP. Student athletes from MAC schools meet three times a year. To discuss NCAA legislation. Share our school's best practices. And make a difference. By volunteering in the community. At the MAC, our voices are heard. Though we compete against each other. We are united. Working towards the common goal. Of enhancing the student athlete experience. We are. We are. We are. MACSAC. The corkscrew spin, flawless. His signature move, the Flying Dutchman. Poetry in motion. And there it is, the baby bird. Breathtaking. A sumo wrestler figure skating? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much money Heather saved by switching to Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. There the numbers half by half. Iona came out and just blitzed Ryder from the start, led by double figures early, ballooned to as much as 22. Ryder's made a couple of pushes, but Iona continues to push back. Leading the way, Ricky McGill, 23 points, Seth Casimir, 20, and Rob, between the two of them, they have combined to go 8 for 15 on three-pointers. Deshaun Much, 3 of 5, so as a team, 11 of 20. Just feeds into what we've been talking about, that they really can shoot. Jordan Washington, meanwhile, getting it done inside, particularly here in the second half as he has avoided some of that severe foul trouble here. Yeah, the 19th game on the season that they've made 10 or more threes. There's some programs that don't go three, four years when they've got 19 yeah. games of 10 or more threes. This is Norville Carey. And oh, by the way, Tim Kluse's team, 17-1 in games when they've made 10 or more threes coming in. The only loss where they had 10 threes was against Monmouth. The other thing that's amazing, when Monmouth ended up winning the regular season finale at Iona, first time in Tim Kluse's seven years that they were swept by a MAC opponent during the regular season. I know. Well, that's crazy. Astonishing. Yeah, it just shows you how dominant they've been under Kluse. Taylor called for the foul. It almost makes you think 
that perhaps they could have won more championships than they have during the six-year run. They have been to the NCAA tournament three times. They've won their share of regular season titles. But like you say, that's a pretty dominant number right there. Yeah. Every year, if you're going to win a MAC championship, you know you're going to have to deal with the Gales. Jordan Washington joins the perimeter shooting group. That's a long two. Raising the roof here at the Times <laughs> Union Center. <laughs> he is fun to watch. He went for the steal, and ultimately it comes to his teammate, Seth Casmir. And Sam Cassell Jr. slows things down. The 2016 Great Alaska Shootout MVP hands off to Deshaun Much. Five on the shot clock. Cassell lets fly off the front rim. Jordan, three on three. Again, goes to his left and tries to score across his body and draws the foul. Oh, you're right. Every time he gets ahead of the pack and he's able to probe, crosses over, goes to the left, and you're right. He brings it back across his body a number of times. Now, we've noticed that here, Rob. you got to figure it's on tape. It's been seen before, and, and it's got to be on a scouting report for Iona, right? Yeah, and so if you're in transition and getting back, though, the problem is is you're not set. And so when it's a transition situation like that, you're just holding on for dear life sometimes. But you're right, if you jump it and go to the left side, it's going to turn the basketball over. Durham comes in and missed the layup. Tyre Marshall coming off his career high performance in the first round. Still looking for his first points tonight. And it's a foul against the Bronx. Anthony Durham collects his first foul. Marshall and Washington Ives go out, replaced by Lundy and Thomas. Also, Durham goes out. McGill, Cassell, Much, Casimir, and Washington. Out there for Iona, looking for its 20th win of the year and a spot in the MAC semifinals. Six minutes left in regulation. They get such good spacing. Four out, one in. Look at how much room Washington's got to maneuver. And with the elevation on that three-point shot, Deshaun Much with one on the shot clock very nearly knocked it down. Good hustle to get back in front of Lundy, still after him. His defensive intensity has been right from the start for the Gales. Another steal. This is Cassell. And Jordan commits the foul. Third foul on Jordan. This Ryder team was picked in the preseason coaches poll, Rob, uh, as the number seven team in the league. They wound up tied for sixth. Coach Baggett's club still trying to make one final push with hope of getting into the max semis. And it was a uh, start and stop kind of year for Ryder. They had a couple of stretches where they played well. And with all those seniors, you thought, well, maybe they can make a run, as we said. they on a four-game win streak coming into this game, playing some of their better basketball, but uh, they were unable to match Iona's intensity at the beginning of the ball game. And they've been playing catch-up ever since. Pass goes out of bounds. Well, these are the two programs in the MAC who have produced the two most recent NBA players. Scott Machado out of Iona, spent some time with the Houston Rockets, and then 
Jason Thompson from Ryder, actually one of the longest tenured Mac players in the NBA ever. He spent the last eight years, seven of them with the Sacramento Kings, and then he split last year between the Warriors and the Raptors. Jason over in China right now, but uh, did some research today, Rob. The longest tenured NBA player out of the Mac, Doug Overton out of LaSalle. He spent 11 years in the league. Everybody forgets those great LaSalle teams that Speedy Morris has. Lionel Simmons, obviously, everybody remembers. One of the lottery picks, much like Jason Thompson himself, a lottery pick. But how about that? Doug Overton. Yep, so the uh, the list goes Overton won. He played 11 years. Jason Thompson, two with eight years. And then the L train himself played seven years all with Sacramento, and he is the all-time leading scorer among former Mac players in the NBA with 5,800 points. Overton, as you know, uh, spent many years as well as a coach in the NBA with the Nets. He was in the D League as a head coach, but Doug Overton currently is a Division II head coach at Lincoln University outside of Philadelphia. But you're right, it's easy to forget about those LaSalle teams because uh, it's been what? Almost a quarter century yeah. since they were in the league. Tip Legler on those teams as well. They had a number of guys off of those teams that played in the MAC that ended up playing in the NBA. McGill blocked by two players. How do you do that one? Half a block for each? <laughs> it's like a sack. You give them a half each. <laughs> Foul on the floor. Cassell picks up his first foul. So do you give it to Lundy or do you give it to Marshall? I think you give both of them a block. <laughs> See, I, I think the scores should be more aggressive with block shots. Absolutely. You know, that, as we say, that's the most underreported stat in basketball. But I guess you can't give a half to each guy or you can't give both of them a block because then it... But if, the, if your hand is equally on it, just as much simultaneously. How do you give it to one over the other? Whoever raises their hand first. <laughs> it's like when there's two guys that go to tip it and the one guy puts his hand up saying, that, that's me. Okay. Oh! 425 remaining. And we see Jan Svanderlich, a junior forward from the Czech Republic, into the game for Iona for the first time. They've got numbers. Tend to shoot, just over four minutes left in the second half. Cassell picked up his dribble. Let's see if McGill can bail him out. No. Lundy gets another block shot. Can't give it to anybody else. It was just number 11. Final media timeout in this MAC quarterfinal game. Iona in complete control. There's one state that has more ski mountains to choose from than any other in the country. That's not the only thing you can only find in New York State. You can find it all only in New York. New York, it's all here. It's only here. Plan your winter getaway at iloveny.com. It's knowing that you will always compete against the best or maybe you become the best that you can be. It's about joining a family with a storied history where athletics and academics are held to the highest of standards. It's about creating the future leaders of tomorrow, all with the focus on one goal, graduation. It's the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. Oh yes, there you go, a little triple drive. Feel the intensity of NCAA March Madness. That's a three. You've got to see it. To believe it, the 2017 NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship first and second rounds, March 16th and 18th at the Key Bank Center in Buffalo. Visit NCAA.com slash MBB tickets for your seats today. 
79-60, Iona leads Ryder. Under four minutes remaining. Time now to look at our life storage dunk of the game. It's your life, store it with care. And we go back to the first half off a terrific feed from Ricky McGill. There it is, Taylor Bessick throwing it down. On a scale of one to 10, how would uh, you rate that dunk round? Five, five, okay. Maybe a six. Bessick known more for his rebounding and shot blocking, but uh, as you said, really, the play was made by the dribble penetration and dump off, but then Bessick finished it with some style. He did. I'll give him a 6.5. Yeah, it? it was an easy dunk. When yep. you're uh, six foot nine and that long, it's not that hard just to go up and I wouldn't know anything about throw an easy it dunk. down. Talk. Speak for yourself. All right, right yeah. Well, you know, we were talking before that last break about uh, some of the greats in league history, and uh, again, I. I don't want to confuse people. Of course, we didn't talk about Jeff Ruland, who had a real good NBA career out of Iona, but he didn't play in the MAC. His playing days in college were done before the MAC was formed in 81 82, so I didn't count him in that. But uh, three former Gales were in the NBA Summer League this year AJ English, David Lowry, and Rashad James. None of the three is in the NBA right now, but uh, English is over in Germany, James is in Croatia. And Lowry has spent this year in the D League playing for Delaware. And Rob, uh, what's the difference for these guys between English and James and Lowry? They each could have gone overseas or they each probably could have played in the D League. Why does Lowry stay in the D League? Why do the other two go overseas? Well, one thing's for sure, you're going to make more money overseas. Right. So a lot of times guys are going to go overseas and not only be able to make more money, but have a different uh, experience in life being in a foreign country. But those guys that stay in the D League, sometimes it's because their agent or they've been told by somebody, hey, if you can develop one more part of your game, maybe you get a call up to the NBA. So obviously that's the lore of the D League. Right. When you sign overseas, there are clauses in the contracts that you can't break them midseason to go to the NBA, where from the D League you can leave any time, right? Yep, exactly. Taylor for three. And that was a deep three. It's Taylor into double figures. McGill, Washington, Deshaun Much. Iona basketball, Jordan was the last to touch. Timeout being called there by Coach Clues, it looked like. And there it's granted. So what do you imagine up 18? Tim Clues saw right there. He immediately was asking his assistant coach, give me the dry erase board, I want to talk about this. Well, three seconds on the shot clock, so he wanted to make sure that they get a good look here. Here's an update on the bracket. Monmouth and St. Peter's have held true to form as the top two seeds into the semis, and Iona, the number three seed, getting close. The four seed, Siena, will face Fairfield coming up at the bottom of the hour. You can see that on ESPNU, and uh, do you see Chalk holding out for the rest of the night? Here, Rob, with Siena, the four, and Fairfield, the five. Well, Siena and Fairfield will be an interesting matchup. The Saints won the two regular season matchups, but. Nico Clareth will not be available tonight, and so certainly will miss his outside shooting. Had 33 in the one game that he played against Fairfield. Didn't play in the other game, so they've shown they can win, win uh, without Clareth. There's some of the Siena Saint fans already in the building. Should be a little bit louder here for the second game. But uh, that, 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 always four fives, usually the best matchup in the quarterfinals. I think that'll be a good one. Looking ahead, though, into the semifinals, remember the Gales swept St. Peter's in the regular season. Last time they met, it was a terrific game, a overtime game. Deshaun Much hit a difficult off-balance four-point play that got them the win in overtime. Washington. And Sevier pulls it back out. That worked out well for Iona with that short shot clock. 
I don't imagine that was the shot Coach Blues drew up, but they'll take it, keep possession. Washington. Oh, he's just patting his stats now. He is. What's, what's the double-double? What's a couple extra rebounds? Go Moses Malone on you. But he cost McGill an assist. assist yeah, My yeah. goodness, that's as easy a layup as Washington's going to get. McGill has been the energizer bunny. Been all over the place. Even on that pass, he ends up diving to the floor. He leads the team in minutes played at over 32 per game. And once again, he's logged 32 minutes so far here tonight. And he's the only Gale to have started every game so far this season. Much. Pass over the head of Severe into the bench. And Ryder gets it back. Taylor launches. This is Lundy. Having a solid second half. All 10 of his points coming since the break. Steal by Thomas. And Taylor will head to the line. And well, this is a rider senior class, Rob. Jimmy Taylor, Xavier Lundy, Khalil Thomas. And then the grad student, Norval Carey, playing his lone season with Ryder, whose season likely won't be over. They should have options at 18 yep. and 14 overall. They lose this, they'll go to 18 and 15. They had a real solid year in the MAC at 10 and 10. And uh, if they are so inclined to accept a bid, certainly they should have another game at least to play after tonight. And talking to Kevin Baggett earlier today, we talked about that, and I expect that they will get a bid. Probably to the CIT, and I think they will accept. So, like you said, Jimmy Taylor, as well as the other seniors, and Thomas Lundy, Norvell Carey. Their career won't end here tonight, but their dream of playing in the NCAA tournament will. And they've accomplished a lot for Kevin Baggett, especially individually. You mentioned Taylor, top 10 all time in scoring. Thomas now top 10 all time at rider and rebounds. But they have not been able to maximize some of those individual abilities as a team. Last year, a disappointing 13 and 20 after winning 21 games the year before as sophomore. But uh, they were kind of hoping that they might be able to make some more noise here this year. And they have missed Demencio Vaughn, the freshman from New York who suffered a torn ACL back in December, underwent surgery. They're hopeful that he'd be back next year. And uh, next year they'll have the uh, the DePaul transfer, Frederick Scott, six foot seven inch sophomore from Indiana. And Divine Eke, a six foot seven inch forward who played his freshman year last year as a main black bear and was very good in the American East Conference. And his skill set should translate well to Ryder next year. And they've done well with transfers. Guys have been able to come right in and play meaningful minutes right off the bat. Nobody's done better with transfers in one year grad students, though, than Tim Kloos and the Iona Gale. They've cornered the market on that. And we've seen it here tonight as Lundy hits the three, and then time is called by Ryder. Cassell's a transfer from Union, uh, UConn. Severe is a transfer from Fordham. Jordan Washington's a junior college transfer. Let's see, Sed Casper came straight from high school. Taylor Bessick, a transfer from James Madison. Deshaun Much, a transfer from the University of Buffalo. So you see a trend. And uh, Tyrell Williams, as mentioned, a uh, transfer from Wyoming. And to answer my question from the first half, I looked it up. <laughs> Larry Nance Jr. still with the Lakers. Oh, there you go. So uh, what would we do without an iPhone? I know. <laughs> I'd like to think I'm not like a lot of folks staring at it all the time, but I certainly would miss it if it wasn't around. Do you think that formula is harder to sustain if you're Tim Kloos than going after four-year players and getting them in at 17 or 18 or 19 years old and having them for the uh, duration? I've talked to Tim about it a lot, and he says, look, you know, 
freshmen just aren't usually ready to come on in and be able to compete yeah. and contribute right away to be able to win championships at this level. And so they've got that mix. So you, know, you look at some of their really good You know, A.J. English was a high school player who was here his entire career, scored 2,000 points, three-time first-team All-Mac. So it's not as if it's all transfers. It, you know, they've had success with high school guys as well, but they've always been able to get those high school guys and surround them with some bigger, stronger, older guys that are able to come in and compete right away. And their associate head coach, Jared Grasso, on the right. Big part of the recruiting efforts throughout the entire seven years. The two of them have been together at Iona. Jared Grasso, one of those assistant coaches whose name will pop up for head coaching jobs once again this offseason. Stevie Jordan. He's got 19 points to lead Ryder. Jordan Washington with the exclamation point. Taylor no. And now the Gales can work another 30 seconds if they so choose. Seth Kazmir as well, straight out of high school, as we mentioned. He was the MAC Rookie of the Year a couple of years ago. E.J. Crawford, a all-rookie selection this year. Yep, freshman out of St. Thomas More Prep School. McGill already has his career high, gets an offensive rebound. And that'll just about do it. Impressive win here in the quarterfinals for Iona. They set the tone early with their defensive intensity. And when they make threes, you're not beating them. And they made threes right from the start. Long night at the office for the Ryder Bronx. They were able to cut it to seven. That was early in the second half, 53-46. But uh, that was it. They had the one good push early, but Iona just kept making shots. And they strung a couple of threes back to back once the lead got into single digits. Not once, but twice. So you go from a seven point game to a 13 point game, from a 10 point game to a 16 point game. And they were just running uphill the entire time. You can see in the eyes of Jimmy Taylor, he knows that while, yes, there is likely to be another game, there won't be another game with this much at stake yep. in his college career. Luka Milosavljevic, a freshman from Vienna, Austria, has come in for Iona. Svanderlich also back in. Williams has returned. And that will do it. A very impressive performance by the third seeded Iona Gales. 88-70, your final score. They move on to the semifinal round where they will take on the St. Peter's Peacocks in the 7 o'clock game tomorrow night. So far, three tickets have been punched into the semis. All chalk, Rob. All chalk so far, and Iona made sure of that early with the defensive intensity, and then their three-point shooting, which has always been a staple of the Gales. Once again, now 18-1 and one on the season when they've made 10 or more threes. When you get ready to play the Gales, you better figure out how to guard that three-point line or you're not winning. We will hear from the Gales when we come back to the Times Union Center in Albany.
Mac Basketball is brought to you by Geico. I love New York. New York State. It's all here. It's only here. Visit iloveny.com. Life storage. It's your life. Store it with care. And UHY, the leading choice for professional tax and business consulting services. UHY, experience the next level of service. Iona College has joined Monmouth University and St. Peter's University in the MAC semifinals. Let's go over to Rob Kennedy now standing by with the Gales head coach. All right, Tim, we were talking about it off air. You guys just flew around in the first couple of minutes. Is that as aggressive as you've seen your team in the last couple of weeks? It definitely is, and I love the energy they brought out here tonight, and that's what we've been talking about. We haven't had that consistently down the end of the season. It's great to see it back tonight. And you guys took that energy on the defensive end and had it on the offensive end as well. You know, when you guys have been really good, boy, you're flying around on the offensive end. Ball is moving. We saw that tonight. We have enough energy to be able to do that now for three consecutive nights. Uh, yeah, we practice like that every day, so our guys are ready for it. And now you play St. Peter's. You've been able to sweep the regular season against them. Last game was a tough one. Preview that game for us. I'll tell you what, they're playing really, really well. John does a great job with them. It's going to be a, a war. Not only do they defend, they have guys who can make shots. they got a really good player in the post. It's going to be a heck of a battle. All right, well, one of those guys that played so well to get you to that next battle said you had good energy and you were shooting a ball today. Obviously, this has been a difficult year for you, coming back from the injury. How are you feeling physically right now? Uh, I'm getting better day by day. You know, I'm just trying to do, do whatever I could to help my team. Some days I'm feeling good, some days I'm feeling bad. So I just do what I could. And you were able to find some good open looks both in transition and in a half court. When you get those open looks, you always seem to be able to convert. How are you going to be able to do that now for the next couple of days to continue to find those good open looks? Oh, just keep shooting. Well, that's the shooter's mentality. Just let it fly. Good luck. You're right back at it tomorrow night in the semifinals against St. Peter's. Thank you. Appreciate it. Set Casimir Geico, player of the game. The Gales win their 20th game of the year and move on to the MAC semifinals. Again, our final score, 88-70. Iona eliminates Ryder. Join us again tonight at about...